welcome to the Megan Claire Show. I'm a breast cancer survivor, patient advocate, and your host, Megan Claire Chase. I am working with Ancora AI to help share their mission, which is to give unbiased and comprehensive information to patients to empower and bring vetted clinical trial options to all patients. Now go ahead and click that subscribe button below and you'll never miss an episode. Now, today's show will focus on the lung cancer and the unfortunate stigma that continues to surround this type of cancer. Now, today's guest is not only a lung cancer patient, but he's a renowned cartoonist and published author in Australia. We've been Instagram friends for, gosh, I guess about a year now. So freaking excited to have Jeff Augustine with us today. Jeff's first comic strip, Aussie, appeared daily in the 70s and 80s in Melbourne, Australia, and launched his successful decades-long career in cartooning, character licensing, and caricaturing. His book, Why Is He Laughing? A Cartoonist's Journey with Cancer, emerged after his diagnosis with advanced lung cancer in 2018. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you very much for having me, Megs. <laughs> very excited to be here. I'm so excited. Um, many of us have used humor to cope with the cancer insanity. Your cartoons are legendary in the cancer space. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> What prompted you to create these cartoons? First of all, when, uh, just after I was diagnosed, the person who, di who diagnosed me had a great sense of humour. Uh, and he said to me, look, before I put you under, he said, you don't have to go under for this operation, but I'd like to put you under because what I'm going to do to you, you won't ever want to remember. <laughs> and that really intrigues me, you know. And, uh, I said, what are you going to do? He said, I'm going, to, I'm going to scrape, cut, brush, sweep. I'm going to do everything I can to get lung samples from you. Um, and then we're going to check these lung samples. I'd like some blood. He said, by the way, he said, do you mind giving me some of your blood? I said, no, you can have as much as you want. And he said, what about some lung samples? I said, how many do you want? He said, well, I'm, I'm getting five for you. Can I have five for me? Really, I was just, just not plus. But later on, when I woke up and he said, look, I think you've got cancer. And you know what it's like when you're told that you've got cancer. I mean, immediately you think death. I mean, that's, right. that comes straight to you. And in, and in indignation and in surprise and everything else, I immediately grabbed a piece of paper and a pen and, and, and did a cartoon for him. And the, and the cartoon was, it's in, the, it's in my book, the cartoon was um, the patient asking somebody like him, you know, um, what was it now, um, what's terminal? And he replies, oh, it's heavenly, you know. So that was the, that was the gag, you know, and he really liked it. They, everybody in the theatre laughed, you know, and he said, look, I do lectures for the, for the at Melbourne University with the, with, the, with the people there, medical people there. Could you do some cartoons for for that? You know, and I agreed to do that. Um, and a year later, he's got those cartoons. And he also said, "You might do a book as well. Think of doing a book." So that's where it all started. But then, when I got into treatment and I, and I was getting really knocked around with 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 chemo, mm -hmm. um, and I was I was awake most nights at all hours. And I was writing silly things and I was writing jokes. I was writing little poems. I was writing all sorts of nonsense. And I'd look at it in the morning and then I'd crawl across to my drawing board and draw the ideas. So the cartoons, that's where the cartooning started. And I realised that every time I went to that drawing board, that's when I was at the safest, my happy happiness. Um, it's when I was at the best and I mean, recently I read Elton John's autobiography and he said, whenever I'm on stage, I'm at my best, I'm at my happiest, I'm at my strongest. This is the place I have to be. 
and he's had cancer and he's been on stage with cancer. And he said, I would go back there every single time and be happy. And I think that if people, if, if your patient, if your colleagues out there can find that stage, find your own little stage, whatever it might be. And mine's the drawing board that I'm sitting at right now talking to you. That if you can find that place to go to, you don't need anyone or anything. Really? <laughs> And I'm still drawing. I mean, I, I drew 500 cartoons. I, I wrote and drew 500 cartoons, 250 of which were chosen for the book, which is which is this. Wow. You know? Um, and, I mean, that's... The book has saved me as well. I mean, you know? And that, that, that then got me on to doing what I'm doing with you now. And with Instagram, and 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 um, you can buy that book on. You can get it in bookshops here, but unfortunately, um, you'd have to get it on Amazon if you wanted the um, online copy. Eventually, we will we'll be working out some distribution uh, set up for, for for other countries. You know, but that's 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 the story of it. I mean, you know, it's it's just finding that happy place, that strong place, and I think everybody can find that. And I had someone phone me yesterday. And said, look, can you help me? I'm really, I've come out of chemo and I, I don't have any any way of doing anything and I don't, feel, I don't feel like doing anything. And I said, why don't you do a crossword puzzle? If you can concentrate on something, and that's, that's what it is. I, I mean, I felt better because I was, because I'm, when, I'm, when I'm cartooning and writing, I'm concentrating. And it's that concentration that does it. It doesn't help with me that I'm thinking cancer all the time and every every which way about cancer, you know, <laughs> to get my cartoons. But at least I've sort of confronted it in doing right. so. And I don't say everyone should have to do that or do that at all, you know, but just find something that'll take your mind off how you're feeling. Do you agree? <laughs> with that? I'm so emotional. <laughs> you're so well, right. Well, that was the other thing. I mean, when you talk about emotion, I mean, there's very little difference between laughing and crying. And if you can't have a good laugh, for God's sake, have a good cry. And mm. I reckon I cried every day for that first first year. I reckon I was in tears at some point through the day. I never knew why. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. It was just the chemo, just, just these chemicals. They just bring up these emotional mountains don't they you know yeah and um, and yeah and you sit there you sit there and sort of dazed like a stunned mullet and you you wonder what the hell's going on and, and then you just find yourself in tears you know maybe it's frustration that you can't just get out there and be normal again mm -hmm. and does anyone really understand how you feel you know the the intro um these pages in my book um these pages here They're all little, they're, they're all taken from their little diary notes from, these are all the scribblings that I did through the night at, from chemo, in those chemo, treat, chemo and radiation treatments. And they were just, you know, just chosen. I didn't choose them, but people chose them. And, and, and they're just all these funny little comments, you know. And there's silly little things like this. There's a silly little rhyme like, um, I remember I wrote that at about four in the morning, one thing when I'd come out of, I had a bad day at radiation, you know. Come to radiation, suntans going cheap. Watch those monsters moving, going beep, beep, beep. Elbows pressed behind you. Knuckles clenched, skin tight. Come to radiation, they just turn on the light. You know, these were the sort of silly things that I was writing, you know, and mm -hmm. then writing gags. And I'd look at them in the morning and half of them was, half of it was nonsense but at least I was doing something. As a seven-year-old, I had Murray Valley um, encephalitis. 50% of the children, this was in rural, rural Victoria, 50% um, of the children died. And, I can, and my mother showed me years later all the drawings I did from hospital. All these little drawings I did from hospital. And you know what child art is like. It's absolutely mm -hmm. fabulous stuff, you know. Yeah. 
nurses and how I was feeling and the whole thing. And they were cartoons. And I don't know, I won't say that got me through. Um, I know that I was terribly homesick. And I know that I got very jealous of the kids who were being wheeled out around me, thinking they were going home. And they weren't, you know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so You're much welcome. for being part of the show, Jeff. <laughs> You're welcome, Lexi. Well, um, <laughs> God, I, I'm speechless. I'm speechless. Um, again, thank you so much, Jeff. And everyone, thank you for joining us today. Make sure to check out our resources and current clinical trial information for multiple types of cancer, including lung cancer at Ancora.ai, where they humanize clinical trials. And don't forget, we're also here on YouTube, but we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And make sure to subscribe below and catch up on previous episodes.